Hi, this is Mrs Holdcroft and I'm going to talk to you about Exposure by Wilfred Owen. Wilfred Owen wrote Exposure in 1917 to 1918 from the trenches of World War I. Not long before he was killed in battle, two weeks before the end of the war. Much of Owen's poetry reveals his anger about the war's waste of life and its horrific conditions. What the poem's about then? Soldiers in the trenches of World War I are awake at night, afraid of an enemy attack. However, nature seems to be their main enemy. It's freezing cold, it's windy, it's snowing. The men imagine that they're returning home, but the doors there are closed to them. They believe sacrificing themselves in the war is the only way of keeping their loved ones at home safe. They return to thinking about their deaths in the icy, bleak trenches. Exposure. Our brains ache in the merciless iced east winds that nive us. Wearied, we keep awake because the night is silent. Low, drooping flares confuse our enemy of the salient, worried by silence. Sentries whisper, curious, nervous, but nothing happens. Watching, we hear the mad gusts tugging on the wire like twitching agonies of men among the, its brambles. Northward, incessantly, the flickering gunnery rumbles, far off like dull rumour of some other war. What are we doing here? The poignant misery of dawn begins to grow. We only know war lasts. Rain soaks and clouds sag stormy. Dawn, massing in the east, her melancholy arms, attacks once more in ranks of shivering ranks of grey. But nothing happens. Sudden successive flights of bullets streak the silence, less deadly than the air that shudders black with snow. With sidelong flowing flakes that flock, pause and renew, we watch them wandering up and down the wind's nonchalance. But nothing happens. Pale flakes with fingering stealth come feeling for our faces. We cringe in holes, back on forgotten dreams and stare snow-dazed deep into grassier ditches. So we drowse, sun-dozed, littered with blossoms, trickling where the blackbird fusses. Is it that we are dying? Slowly our ghosts drag home, glimpsing the sunk fires glozed with crusted Dark red jewels, crickets jingle there. For hours the innocent mice rejoice. The house is theirs. Shutters and doors all closed. On us the doors are closed. We turn back to our dying. Since we believe not otherwise can f kind fires burn, nor ever sun's smile true on child or field or fruit, for God's invincible spring our love is af made afraid. Therefore, not loath, we lie out here. Therefore we're born, for love of God seems dying. Tonight, this frost will fasten on this mud and us, shriveling many hands, puckering foreheads crisp. The burying party picks and shovels in shaking grasp, pours over half-known faces. All their eyes are ice. But nothing happens. The main lines I think that I would focus on in this particular poem are the first line, our brains ache in, isolous, in the merciless iced winds that nive us. This personifies the weather. Merciless implies, implies that nature itself has turned against the soldiers, hidden in their trenches. You have the sibilance, the sound technique of sibilance, with the merciless iced east winds. It sounds cold and oppressive and it chills the reader to the bone, making them empathise with the terrible conditions the soldiers are going through. The ellipsis at the end of the line also suggests that this is never ending, this cold goes on forever and ever. And finally, the word knife is a violent image and gives a sense of pain and suffering. Even the weather is conspiring against these poor men. The next line is we cringe in holes. 
back on forgotten dreams stare snow dazed deep into grassier ditches we cringe in holes suggest that the soldiers have now been reduced to a state of animals they cringe in fear and the technique of zoomorphism reduces the men to these terrified animals who have to hide in ditches they seem to have even lost their faith forgotten dreams in this place home seems so far away that it can't even be remembered well the alliteration of dazed and deep strengthens the sense of despair for the reader and finally i focus on the line but nothing happens this refrain comes back four times we're continually told that nothing happens and it represents the boredom and the monotony of what's going on. All their thinking, all the time, is of death in the cold. The poem begins and ends in exactly the same way, but nothing happens. Nothing has changed at the end of the poem. It's going on forever. These men are stuck between life and death. In line 30, when we turn back to our dying, this emphasises the limbo between life and death that these men are suffering from. Nothing can change it. The repetition of nothing suggests that they're waiting to die. And this is worse almost than death itself. Finally, the reality of war is also a key, thing, key, uh, key theme in Charge of the Light Brigade and Bayonet Charge. While Storm on the Island focuses on the power of nature. Um, London is another poem with the total absence of hope. And I think that they're very, very good poems to compare with this one. Thank you for listening. Good luck. Bye.